Science has this great way of taking things we already like and making them even better. It is still emotionally amazing, but it gets better when you bring science to it. I'm really curious about artificial intelligence, leadership, biology, how all of it can come together. Different organizations are facing different challenges. Sometimes it's a question of how large they are and how many complex moving parts there are. For others, it's they're sort of stuck in one place and they're looking for a way to branch out and do other things. And there's always some scientific parallel that can help them see it a little bit differently. And I want you to imagine what would happen if that many cars tried to move down a road together. Have you ever been to something called the Don Valley Parkway, right? Why are termites literally smarter than us? What is it about their group dynamics that's different? And what can a great leader do with a group to help them achieve their potential? I'm trained as a scientist. I did my PhD at Cornell University. I did postdocs at Boston University, Brown University, and I was on track to be an academic, but I left a faculty position to jump into TV. It's a visual that's gonna be with me for a while, Dan. And boom, all of a sudden I'm posting all these different TV shows in the world of science. I've worked uh, on Daily Planet in Canada. I've been a guest with Jay Leno, with Craig Ferguson, and a whole bunch of other people just spreading the gospel, telling people how great science is. I am CTV's science and technology specialist. So my job is to show up on the news and talk about whatever's happening in the world of science. I'm not the smartest person you're ever gonna meet. I'm not an idiot, but I'm not the smartest person in the world. But I'm curious and I love learning and I'm really good at helping people go on that journey with me. Bats sometimes seem like they're pretty off topic for just about 99.9% .9 of the groups I talk to, but science isn't. The bat that I'm most famous for my work for is the common vampire bat. And so in the world of bats, there are 1,400 different kinds. And of those 1,400, three are vampire bats. They feed on blood. I have not yet had the experience that my experience with vampire bats on treadmills was directly applicable to the problems that an organization is facing. Yes, that is the appropriate noise to make when you see a vampire bat move across the floor. I mean, they're just, they're hot. But that approach of being curious and paying attention to what you see, that's also gonna work if you're trying to figure out how to increase sales. It's also gonna work if you're trying to figure out how to build connections. That scientific method, that's always a good way forward. My keynotes are put together in a very methodical way that's frankly inspired by the science of how people learn. I start with a really strong hook, something that's gonna make adrenaline get secreted into their bloodstream so that their amygdala fires up and their brains are turned on. Now I wasn't paying close attention and he is walking right up to a bear. And I know. Now he's fine, I'll just spoil the ending, he's fine. I give them that empathy and that sympathy feeling for what it would be like to be the dad or the kid in that moment. And once they've had that moment, there's a different energy in the room. It just opens their brains up. What I bring isn't necessarily the greatness of Dan Riskin, it's the greatness of science. When you bring a speaker in front of a group, you are tapping into something that humans have done for ever. And the reason that is so powerful is because natural selection has maintained it because groups of people with a great leader do amazing things and they always have. Thank you.